The following story is rated M for mature audiences only. If you've already read the fan fiction, please feel free to continue if you are alright listening to the smut. If not, below is the time in which the smut is put, so please feel free to skip it if you wish. Thank you. Syrup and Honey, Chapter 11 Kurt smiled and said goodbye to the customer who was leaving with his cup of coffee and opened the register to put the money inside. Blaine was standing right beside it, leaning against the wall and watching Kurt with a bright grin. "'If I hear another click while I'm talking to a customer, I'll ban you from my bakery,' Kurt said, trying to sound irritated, which didn't really work because his lips were still stretched into a happy smile. Blaine picked up his camera again and shot another picture right in Kurt's face. "'I have no idea what you're talking about.' "'Stop it!' Kurt laughed, covering himself. "'Now you're just wasting the film!' "'I could never waste film with you,' Blaine answered softly, causing Kurt to peek in between his fingers. He took another picture of him because he looked simply adorable. "'Your beauty needs to be immortalized in every possible way.' "'Oh, shut up!' Kurt rolled his eyes, but his cheeks were flushed. "'If I knew you were going to act like this, I wouldn't have let you come with me.' Blaine laced their fingers together and tugged him closer so he could wrap his arms around him. "'I love spending time with you, even if I have to watch you flirt with your customers.' "'I am not flirting with my customers!' Kurt said, scandalized. "'Okay, you're just being overly caring. I'm just trying to be nice. It's good for business.' Uh "'Uh-huh,' Blaine smirked, and they were so close now, their lips mere inches apart. "'So you're denying you flirted with me?' "'You're not a customer,' Kurt bit his lip, trying to hold back his smile. "'I was the first two or three times I came over,' Blaine replied. "'You kept taking my hand or touching my arm.' "'Are you complaining?' Kurt quirked an eyebrow. Blaine closed the little gap between them, his lips pressed against his. "'Never.' "'Hm, that's what I thought,' Kurt murmured as he parted his lips. Blaine kissed him deeply and passionately, his hands twitching where they were resting on Kurt's back, as if not even that was enough. Blaine pulled away way too soon. He wasn't used to kissing other men in public, and it made him feel very nervous, as if getting caught would be something terrible, when in reality it wasn't. There was nothing wrong with two men showing their love for each other the same way any straight couple would. He needed to learn that. He needed to get used to it, because there was nothing wrong with it. So, he said, his voice a bit hoarse. He cleared his throat. throat) Uh, what time are you closing? Around six. Kurt curled his hands in the back of his neck, playing with the curls that fell there, and clearly not as worried about people seeing them as Blaine was. Okay. Blaine nodded, making plans very quickly. "'What if I take care of dinner while you finish down here?' Kurt looked at him with interest. "'You're going to cook?' "'Yes, I was thinking I could make that lasagna I promised you.' Blaine allowed one of his fingers to trace circles on Kurt's back. "'You're always cooking for me, and for hundreds of other people, too, actually, so... "'I thought, maybe, you could relax tonight and let someone spoil you a bit.' Kurt almost purred in pleasure. "'You know... That sounds fantastic. Blaine kissed the tip of his nose before untangling himself from him. Perfect. That being the case, I'm going to go grocery shopping to get everything we need for dinner. I'll take Robert for a walk while I'm at it. Blaine picked up his scarf and coat from where he had placed them on the back of the chair. I should be back before you close. I'll be right here. Kurt leaned down against the counter, propping his chin on his hands and watching Blaine as he moved to the door. A new customer was coming in, and Blaine nodded politely in greeting before disappearing down the street. Kurt wasn't sure if it was the fact that they had just confessed each, to each other that they were in love, or that they had shared a night so beautiful, so unique, so intimate, or if Blaine was just too amazing to describe him in words. But as Kurt followed him with his blue eyes fixed on Blaine's dark curls moving down in the December air, he somehow knew he would end up marrying that man sooner or later. For some reason, Kurt had the feeling Bert would approve. As soon as Kurt started climbing the stairs up to his apartment, the smell of delicious food filled his nostrils, and he inhaled in contentment. For a moment, he had a vision of coming home to Blaine after a long day of work, and he felt his heart stop beating. The rush of happiness that vision caused him hit him like a freight train. "'Hey!' 
Blaine had the biggest smile on his face and looked positively adorable moving around the tiny kitchen wearing Kurt's purple apron on top of his old t-shirt and sweatpants that he had evidently put back on after returning to the apartment. Kurt fell a little bit more in love with him in that moment. Hey, you! Kurt dropped the keys of the bakery on the table by the stairs. How's the lasagna going? Perfect. I just put it in the oven, Blaine answered as he cupped Kurt's face to give him a quick peck on the lips. You look tired. There's plenty of time for you to take a bath and relax if you want. Kurt made a quiet humming sound. That actually sounds pretty good. Blaine pushed him gently towards the bathroom. Then go. Tonight, your kitchen is my kitchen. I have everything under control. Kurt rolled his eyes but obliged, stopping by the couch to stare incredulously at Robert and Brownie, who were cuddling together and sleeping soundly, before going to his bedroom to get a pair of pajama pants and a t-shirt to change into after his bath. He filled the tub with warm water and sat in there for at least fifteen minutes, listening to Blaine wandering around on the other side of the door. He seemed to be singing something softly as he sat the table, and Kurt couldn't stop smiling. This was perfect. This was what he wanted in his life, but he hadn't known it until now. He wanted the closeness, the domesticity. He wanted the casual peck on the lips when he got home and the strong arms around him while he slept. He wanted the sounds of someone else around, of knowing he was not only living but sharing. He wanted the smile on Blaine's face because he had never seen him like this before. Blaine was even more beautiful when he was happy. Kurt didn't want to see him sad or upset ever again. After about fifteen minutes, Kurt sighed and got out of the tub. He dried himself quickly and put on the clothes he had taken to the bathroom with him. He didn't style his hair, which made him feel almost naked, but considering Blaine had seen him with bed hair that morning, it would have been in vain to go through the trouble. Blaine was opening a bottle of wine when he returned to the kitchen. The table was simply but beautifully set, and the smell of the lasagna seemed to have intensified. Kurt's stomach rumbled, which made Blaine look up and smile. "'Luckily for you,' he said, putting the now-open bottle on the table. "'Dinner's ready.' "'Great!' Kurt replied, grinning in return. "'I hope it tastes as good as it smells.' Blaine put his hands on Kurt's shoulders when he wandered into the kitchen, clearly intending to help. He guided him back to the table and softly forced him to sit down. "'It's clear you don't let people into your kitchen very often.' Kurt let his fingers slide over the edge of his plate. "'I just... <sighs> This is weird. Blaine paused, halfway between the table and the kitchen, the platter with the steaming lasagna in his hands. He seemed hesitant for a second. Good weird or bad weird? Kurt sighed almost dreamily. Amazing weird. Blaine relaxed visibly and put the lasagna on the table, reaching for Kurt's plate. I've never shared things like this with anyone. It feels so homey. Well... Blaine set the plate in front of Kurt before reaching for his own. You know I haven't either. Kurt smiled lazily, watching as Blaine took the seat across from the little table. So, how does it feel so far? Do I really need to answer that? Blaine teased, and Kurt took a good look at him. Blaine was relaxed, his eyes bright, warm, and trusting. The smile spread on his lips was wide and sincere, and his body wasn't tense like it used to be all the time. Kurt's heart clenched almost painfully in his chest, but it wasn't for any bad reasons. It was because seeing Blaine like that brought him so much happiness he wasn't sure how to let it out. Kurt's hand found Blaine's over the table and he squeezed it gently. "'I love you,' was his answer. It seemed to be the right one, too, because Blaine's face lighted up even more. "'I love you, too.' They just stared at each other for a few seconds and then Blaine sighed as if having to break the moment was a real sacrifice. Now I'd like you to try my food before it gets cold. Kurt chuckled as he grabbed his fork. He took a piece of lasagna on it. As soon as the food made contact with his mouth, he moaned quite embarrassingly. Mm, oh my god! Blaine, this is fantastic! Well, thank you! Blaine laughed as he took a bite of his own. That's a huge compliment coming from you. Mmm. Kurt shoved a bit more of lasagna into his mouth. I have to admit I was a little concerned that I'd have to pretend to like it for the sake of our new buddying love, but... Mmm. You're not the absolutely lost case I thought you were going to be. Your lack of confidence insults me! Blaine feigned irritation, but it wasn't very effective since he couldn't stop smiling as he watched Kurt eat eagerly. 
"'Hey, it was you who said that you lived on takeout,' Kurt said after swallowing, reaching for his glass of wine. "'It's not my fault, but I can totally work with this.' "'Really, now?' Blaine seemed amused. That was something new, too. Kurt loved discovering every new sign of change in him. "'Yes, I can see some cooking lessons in your future,' Kurt muttered with a playful smirk. "'I'm going to make a new man out of you, Blaine Anderson.' Blaine looked at him over the rim of his own glass of wine. He was serious, but there was a warmth in his eyes that was sort of comforting for Kurt. I have the feeling you're already doing that. Kurt had to lean over the table and kiss him. He just had to. Blaine woke up the next morning in a mess of tangled limbs. Kurt's naked body was pressed against his, head resting on his shoulder, arms thrown around him, and his soft breath hitting the same spot on his neck in little puffs. It was a glorious way to start the day, and Blaine brought him a little closer, dropping a few gentle kisses on his forehead, inhaling the scent of his shampoo off of his chestnut hair. He remembered that same smell from the first time he had been in Kurt's apartment, the mix of flowers and coconut. He felt Kurt slowly stirring beside him, nuzzling against him in the last seconds of his sleepiness. Soon, a pair of dazed, stunning blue eyes was looking right into his. "'Morning.' Kurt mumbled, hiding his face again in the crook of Blaine's shoulder. "'Good morning, beautiful.' Blaine traced the outside of Kurt's spine with his fingertips and letting the chestnut hair caress his lips. "'Love it when you call me that,' Kurt said, voice muffled by Blaine's skin, still half asleep but entirely adorable. "'Well, that's exactly what you are. I'm just stating the obvious,' Blaine answered, causing Kurt to giggle. Kurt hummed in contentment, shifting even closer to Blaine. His morning erection brushed lightly over Blaine's thigh, eliciting a low, lazy moan out of him. All the sounds that Kurt had made the night before as they explored their bodies even further came back to Blaine in a flash. They had been so delicious, so loud and eager. He needed to hear them again. He flipped Kurt in a swift, elegant movement until he was lying on his back with Blaine on top of him, straddling him, but maintaining enough distance between them as to not provide any friction. I've always wanted to know, Blaine muttered as he let his lips trail along Kurt's jaw, what people meant when they talked about lazy Sunday morning sex. Kurt swallowed, the movement of his throat catching Blaine's attention. I guess there's only one way to find out. Kurt's hands went straight to Blaine's hips, gripping tightly and pulling him down. They gasped when their bodies were glued together, the touch intimate and delicious, but never close enough. They wanted to melt into each other, to become one, to lose the notion of where one started and the other ended. Blaine angled himself into their cocks were trapped between their stomachs. Kurt arced back, pressing his hips up into Blaine's, building slowly over them. "'God, the things you do to me, Kurt,' Blaine whispered, leaning down to kiss the curve of Kurt's neck, never stopping the rocking of his hips. "'You're making me addicted to you. I don't see a problem with that.' Kurt answered, spreading his legs wider so they could be even closer. We should just do this all day. As wonderful as that sounds, Blaine let his tongue graze a purple mark on Kurt's shoulder from the night before. I'd like to do other things with you, too. Hmm, really? Kurt placed one of his hands on the small of Blaine's back to keep him where he wanted him and let the other wander up so he could bury his fingers in his messy curls. Like, like what? Take you out on a date, maybe? Blaine lifted his head so he could look into Kurt's eyes. If that's what you want, I mean. Kurt licked his lips, his breathing starting to get heavier. That'd be great. Oh, God, Blaine, right there. Shit, Kurt, I could take a picture of you right now. Blaine almost whined, unable to look away from the man beneath him. You look so gorgeous. Don't you ever dare take pictures of me while we are... God, Blaine, harder. Words were lost and forgotten from that point on. All they could do was focus on breathing and thrusting against each other, feeling how the amazing pleasure started to build gradually, until it seemed to shoot through both of them. They clung onto each other, screaming with their mouths open and touching, their eyes locked and wild. Blaine recovered first, although his body kept shaking in the afterglow. He propped himself up on his shoulders and started placing kisses all over Kurt's face, neck and shoulders, everywhere he could reach. Fantastic. You're fantastic. Kurt chuckled lazily. Someone's grateful for discovering Sunday morning sex. He winced a bit when he noticed the stickiness between their bodies. 
He reached for the box of tissues on the bedside table. Move, dummy, let me clean us up. They stayed in bed for a little while, snuggling and sharing kisses every now and then. Finally, Kurt got up to make breakfast, and Blaine took a quick shower before joining him in the kitchen. I was serious, you know, Blaine said as he spread some jam on toast and handed it to Kurt. I want to take you out on a date. Kurt smiled as he placed a cup of coffee in front of Blaine at the table. Where would you take me? I'd like to do the classic date. Blaine shrugged and then took a bite of his own toast. Dinner and then go to a movie. Probably a horror movie, so I could have an excuse to wrap my arm around you. Rolling his eyes, Kurt took a sip of his coffee. You're so ridiculous. You've told me that before. Because it's true. Anyway. Blaine accentuated the word to show he was ignoring Kurt's words. I know today is not a good day to do any of that because you need to get stuff done for the bakery tomorrow. I do indeed. Kurt nodded in confirmation. Well, I was thinking we could still go somewhere nice and have lunch, take a walk around. Blaine chewed on his toast thoughtfully. Whatever you want. Kurt smiled, excited. It sounds perfect. We'll do the classic date some other day. They ate their breakfast while chatting animatedly about everything and anything at all, laughing and looking at each other as if all the other things in the apartment didn't exist, as if the noises coming from the street outside the window didn't reach their ears. When they finished their coffee and toast, it was Kurt's turn to take his shower, and Blaine took the time to walk Robert. He came back to find Kurt wrapped in a towel and trying to choose an outfit, and surprised him with a bouquet of yellow roses. Kurt swooned as he buried his nose in the flowers to take in their scent, and then kissed Blaine passionately. So passionately, in fact, that they ended up making another trip to the bed, where they got way too distracted to even care about Kurt's still wet hair on the pillows or Blaine's shoes on the covers. They didn't last long anyway. Once they were finally able to untangle one from the other, they both needed another shower, which they took together. That didn't prove to be a good idea either, and by the end of it, Blaine was happy he hadn't made reservations at the restaurant because they would have missed it anyway. Not that he really cared. <laughs> because as he pulled Kurt closer by tugging on the towel wrapped around his waist again and kissed him lazily, a smile spread on his lips. He really, really, really didn't care. Blaine took Kurt to a little Mediterranean restaurant not too far away from the bakery. They walked all the way there, Kurt's fingers laced with his inside of his coat's pocket. It was hard for Blaine not to look around and try to find judging glares, but he found it a little easier when he concentrated on the warmth of Kurt's hands or the glow of his stunning blue eyes or the way the cold weather turned his pale cheeks pink. Blaine would have grabbed his camera and shot a picture right then and there, but he didn't want to let go of Kurt's grasp. It was a cozy little place, and they chose a booth by the window so they could watch the snow falling outside. Blaine had fish and vegetables with garlic sauce. You'd better brush your teeth before you kiss me again, was all Kurt had to say about it, and Kurt went for the spinach casserole. They tried each other's meals, and Blaine slipped a little bit of his fish onto Kurt's plate as they both bickered like an old married couple without ever losing the smile. If their waitress found anything uncomfortable in their behavior, she didn't comment on it, and Kurt was grateful for it. He didn't need Blaine to experience a rush of homophobia while they were having such a nice time. They walked to Kurt's apartment afterward. It was too cold to do anything else, and they were both a little tired after not getting enough sleep the night before. Not that either of them was complaining, though. It ended up cuddling on the couch, watching reruns of Project Runway. Blaine pressed against the back of the couch, Kurt pressed against Blaine's chest, and Brownie pressed against Kurt's stomach. Robert was sleeping soundly on the floor. They took a nap together, and later Kurt woke Blaine up with a cup of coffee before going downstairs to start baking for the next day. Blaine followed him, camera hanging off of his neck, and spent half the time helping him, which he had a, and he had a gift for sprinkling cu sprinkles on cupcakes, as if he had been born to do that, or at least Kurt said so when he was teasing him, and half watching Kurt, admiring his beauty, trying to capture it in a picture, loving how natural he was amongst the silver, shiny appliances and the flowers spread all over the counter. It had been a simple day, but Blaine knew he would look back on it in the years to come, and it would always remain to be one of the happiest days of his life. The smile was still intact by the time Blaine arrived to work on Monday morning. He had stopped briefly by the bakery to give Kurt a quick kiss and promise to be there by lunch if the meeting he had scheduled for that morning didn't end late. He almost pranced his way out of the elevator and down the hallway towards his office. 
"'Good morning, Mr. Anderson,' Lucy greeted him, grinning, but looking a bit surprised. "'Good morning, Lucy,' Blaine smiled at her. "'Beautiful day, isn't it?' "'Um,' Lucy glanced at the window and then back at Blaine. "'It's pouring rain, Mr. Anderson.' Rain reminded him of Kurt, of the day they met, of their first time in Blaine's bed with nothing but the sound of rain in their own bodies demanding more. Rain was one of Blaine's favorite things now. "'I know,' he nodded. Lucy watched him, confusion evident in her eyes. Okay. Any messages? he asked distractedly, still looking out the window, still thinking of the curves and the strong muscles of Kurt's body. Mr. Brown from the recycling com company case called ten minutes ago. He said he needs you to call back. He has some questions, she said as she read the notes on her desk diligently. Then she cleared her throat and the next words weren't as light and cheery as before. And, um... <clears throat> "'Your father wants to see you as soon as you can.' That seemed to get Blaine's attention. He turned away from the window, all thoughts of Kurt immediately pushed to the back of his mind. "'Well,' he muttered, his voice turning back to the usual monotone, almost defeated voice. "'Let's not keep the man waiting.' Lucy hated that she'd had to do that. She hated that she was the one ripping the joy from Blaine's eyes. But she had no other choice. That was her job. Blaine walked into his office, took his coat and scarf off, and put his briefcase down. He moved very slowly, dragging out the moment until he had to meet with his father, but also knowing Walter didn't like to wait and that he became more and more annoyed and impossible to deal with the longer he waited. So after sighing to himself, he went to his father's office. Walter's secretary wasn't at her desk, something that wasn't unusual. She liked to wander around the building in her short skirts, showing off. Blaine didn't want to accuse her of being incompetent, but he barely remembered a time when he saw her doing her job. With one last deeply inhaled breath, Blaine pushed the door with the well-polished sign with his dad's name open and, and entered. He wished fervently that he'd knocked as soon as he realized his mistake. He didn't know why he hadn't. The elegantly furnished room with all its expensive art objects on the walls, on the tables, on the shelves seemed so cold Blaine felt a shiver down his spine. The sound of the door opening had startled not only Walter, but also Catherine, whose face appeared from behind the desk from her position in what could only be the space between his father's legs. Maybe they could have given some sort of excuse, but her swollen red lips and the hand his wa Walter had on the back of her head, his fingers buried in the blonde hair in a tight grip, made it impossible for them to pretend something else was happening. Oh my God! Blaine mumbled, and he immediately wished he had stayed silent. The glare his father directed at him had to be the worst one yet. The sound of a zipper closing made Blaine's stomach twist. Catherine stood up as delicately as she could. "'I'll go send those papers, Mr. Anderson.' Walter didn't answer. His eyes were fixed on Blaine, who had moved aside when Catherine passed him on the doorway, shutting the door behind her. The temperature in the room seemed to drop a thousand degrees more if that was even possible at this point. Blaine didn't even dare move. So, Walter started, surprisingly calm, lacing his fingers and leaning back against his leather chair. Apparently I have to add manners to the list of things you're terrible at. Blaine closed his eyes, trying to find patience deep within himself. Of course Walter would brush this off as if finding him being given a blowjob by his secretary was Blaine's fault and not his. Of course. Dad, you, he said softly, holding back the rage he wanted to let out. What I do or don't do isn't your business, Walter interrupted harshly, and I would appreciate it if you respected my privacy. Respect? Blaine repeated, incredulous. You're talking about respect? Dad, I think you— Have I ever cared about what you think? Walter spat coldly. And especially not now after seeing the kind of company you resort to. He should have known. Blaine should have known this was about the meeting with the Hummels on his birthday. There's nothing wrong with... There's a lot of things wrong with them, Blaine. Their status, their background, and that nasty fag you... Don't! Blaine's voice raised suddenly. Don't use that word to refer to Kurt. Walter studied Blaine in silence for a few seconds, thoughtful. Is he your little whore, Blaine? Blaine started to have trouble breathing. 
His chest was agitated, and he felt his hands forming fists at his sides. "'I'm warning you, Dad.' "'Warning me what?' he asked almost mockingly. "'You better not have anything to do with that—that that thing. I won't approve of you spending time with him in any way, or any member of that family for that matter.' "'You can't—' "'Yes, I can. Don't forget that everything you are, everything you have, you owe to me, Blaine,' Walter said in a bored voice. "'So I forbid it. You're already bringing shame to our family, but at least you have had the decency to keep it quiet.' If someone sees you with that whore of yours, people will talk. Don't mess with me, Blaine." At this point, Blaine's hands were so tightly clenched in fists that they hurt. His ears were buzzing and he was seeing red. He wanted to jump forward and punch his father in his arrogant face. "'So this is what you're going to do,' Walter smiled in that humorless, fake polite way he used with the people he didn't like. "'The firm's Christmas party is next weekend. You're going to find an appropriate date for it, and you'll do your best not to be a huge disappointment for one damn night. Are we clear?" Blaine didn't reply. He was too busy holding himself back. He knew better than to push his father's buttons, but he sure as hell was sick of all of this. Good. Walter interpreted his silence as an agreement. Now get out of here. You've already ruined my morning enough. Blaine didn't need to be told twice. He turned around and left the office after slamming the door shut behind him. Catherine looked at him with narrowed eyes as he walked straight to the elevator, ignoring Lucy calling after him, confused. It was freezing outside. The cold and the rain seemed to seep through his clothes and reach his skin, his flesh, his bones. He shivered lightly, but he didn't stop. He didn't care about the weather. There was only one thing in his mind, an insistent urge to see Kurt's face. He knew that would make it all better, no matter what. A car almost ran over him when he crossed the street running, but he didn't stop until he was at the bakery's door, which he pushed open, grateful to see that it was empty, just like the day they had met. Kurt was arranging some cupcakes on a plate to put in the displayer and looked up distractedly, with the usual smile he put on his face to greet his customers, always so warm, always so welcoming. It fell as soon as he saw the desperate look on Blaine's face. Blaine? he said, concern tainting his beautiful voice. "'Baby, what's wrong?' Blaine's breath was he heaving, and he felt as if he had just run a marathon. He wasn't able to find the right words, so he just stood there, helplessly, as Kurt moved across the bakery towards him with his arms wide open. Blaine melted into them, comfort instantly replacing the cold stabbing his body. He breathed in Kurt's sweet scent, loving the way it enveloped him, bringing back all the good memories from the weekend." A few minutes passed without them saying anything until Kurt swallowed, nervously, and began rubbing the gentle circles on the small of Blaine's back through the fabric of his damp clothes. "'You're worrying me, you know. Don't.' Blaine's voice was a lot more hoarse than he expected. He cleared his throat. "'I don't want you to worry. I just needed you, that's all.' "'Blaine, you just ran out in the rain without your coat on and collapsed against me,' Kurt pointed out softly. I think there's something you're not telling me. Did your father say something to upset you again? Doesn't he always? Blaine replied, his face hidden in the crook of Kurt's neck. I wish the weekend never ended. It was perfect. There will be others, Kurt assured him, placing a kiss on, the t on his temple. You can stay over tonight again, or I can come over to your place if you want, if it's easier than moving Robert from your apartment to mine all the time. He offered with what he hoped was a reassuring smile. I'd love to. Blaine leaned in for a kiss, the touch of their lips more than enough to make him feel a bit better. When they pulled away, Kurt smiled at him. He just smiled, so gorgeous, so open, so caring and wonderful, and Blaine could feel his heart jumping inside his chest at the sight. Would you be my date to the office Christmas party next weekend? Blaine blurted out before he even thought about it. As soon as he realized what he had just said, Anxiety filled him, and he opened his mouth to take the words back. Really? Kurt exclaimed, enthusiasm lighting up over his entire face. He clapped his hands together in excitement. Of course! Oh my god, Blaine, this is awesome! What should I wear? Is it formal? I have a new tie I've been looking forward to wearing since— Blaine couldn't hear Kurt's happy babble anymore. He had no idea what he had just done or why he had done it, but he couldn't tell Kurt it was a mistake, that they couldn't go together that he couldn't be seen with Kurt in public. It would break his heart. 
it would make Kurt feel disappointed in him, and Blaine was tired of seeing disappointment in people's faces when they looked at him. He wouldn't be able to bear it to see it in Kurt's beautiful eyes. He tried not to let the panic show, but Blaine already knew it would be an absolute disaster. End of chapter 11